Hello and welcome to the Five of the Week. Five of the Week is a podcast show where we discuss, you guessed it, Five of the Week. It's not the Five of the Week, it's a Five of the Week. The Five can include anything and everything between coaches, players, single matches and even recruitment. I am at a coach star. Uh, my NCAA character is JJ Harklewood, currently playing his sophomore year for the Duke Blue Devils, and my co-host is... Hello, I'm Danger Golding on the forums. Uh, I am the have a SBA player in his third year at Toronto, and I am also the athletic director of the West Virginia Mountaineers. We're going to be, uh, as he said, looking at five of the weeks, and this time around we're going to be looking at some of the players you can expect to see a lot of this season, some of the people that will be breaking out of their biggest stats of their careers you can probably expect yes we'll definitely be looking at some of the most exciting ncaa players this upcoming season 37 and i guess we'll begin with chad mcpherson of the michigan state spartans chad is a six foot five inch point guard he averaged 11.5 points 5.2 rebounds 8.1 assists with a 57.5 true shooting percentage the Michigan State Spartans made the second round of the tournament, losing to the Cardinals. Uh, Chad averaged 12.5 points in the tournament with a shocking 13.0 assists. Yeah, he's been um, a very good point guard that's, pretty, that's progressed pretty well from his uh, freshman year. He was obviously one of the top freshmen in his, his first year in the NCAA. And uh, coming into a second year with the Spartans, he's uh, had a bit more strength to his roster this time, especially with Rayful there. Uh, he's kept his percentages are coming around the same as in his freshman year, but I think this is the season he's really going to step up in terms of scoring. Obviously, 11.5 points per game is pretty decent for a point guard, but I think you can uh, you can really expect him to get his, his uh, points per game up quite a bit. His assists are already pretty high. So, well, second in assists just behind um, the... Uh, Anna Viozzi. Who's just left for the draft. So you can probably yeah. expect to see Jad getting the assist title this season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Michigan State, they are losing a rifle for the draft, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're losing rifle for the draft, which is going to inhibit them a bit scoring wise but that's just going to open up more room for jad to to score really he's a three point shooter primarily most of his points coming from outside he'll uh feel the lack of an inside scoring big but i think he'll step up to the challenge and the michigan state spartans as a whole are in a position to win it all in season 37 i'd say uh, retaining most of their core and the players remaining looking obviously better than ever. Um, as you said, Jad is <clears throat> looking more and more like a complete offensive player, but that leaves room to improve on the other side of the ball. Uh, he's a career 40% three-point shooter. And... He's, um, one, one thing that's very good about Jad is he's, he's got his fouls exceptionally low. He's actually, last season, he averaged the most minutes out of any player, which means which you can see it's uh, obviously good to have your starting point guard on the floor for pretty much the entire game. It's very helpful. One slightly worrying thing I would say about him is that physically he's not the best. I think this, this season you should pro you'll probably see him getting a lot better, stronger and quicker, and that's going to boost his overall game so much. You're predicting uh, Jad to win the assist title this season, and... I'm predicting the Michigan State Spartans to make the tournament finals. This that's a bold season. prediction. Yeah, they're uh, might they might be more like a dark horse pick, but uh, so uh, Jad is our first first of the five of the week, and second second we're going to be looking at uh, Tomislav Ivancic from the West Virginia Mountaineers. Uh, he's a seven foot three in center, and obviously you have uh, you have a lot more knowledge on him than I do. So, yeah, I've got uh, I've he's in his third year now. He's been a really active member in the locker room. Really great. 
He's uh, obviously a very defensive focused player, as you can tell, as there's not many, uh, you won't see many starting centers averaging less than 10 points a game, but that's, that's he makes up with, with uh, great defensive presence inside. Excellent rebounder, 9.2 a game, as you said. And that was fourth in the league last season. We expect him to be in the top three at least again. I think he's going to be uh, moving into a slightly more offensive game, adding some some more shooting, some more inside scoring. That's really going to help out the Mountaineers as that's what we've been lacking last season was a real first option to score. And the West Virginia Mountaineers uh, for essentials, they went 28 and 54 last season, did not make the tournament. They are also, no. I believe, losing two players to the draft. draft oh, practice. yes. Uh, our, our longest tenured player, Eric Bonhams, he's been, uh, he's been on the team since the very start of the Mountaineers, back when they were created. He's going to be going to the draft, I think. He should be a, an okay pickup for anyone in the SBA. All right, so that adds up to two with Ivancic uh, compl- complementing Chad McPherson, already a dynamic duo for us. Uh, then we'll move on to another guard player, our third player of the week, Sean Stockton from Georgetown Hoyas. Uh, Sean Stockton is a six foot one inch point guard. He averaged 10.6 points, 6.1 rebounds. Seven assists with a 51.5 true shooting percentage. Uh, Stockton is a pass-first point creator type player, I would, I would say, and uh, they kind of unceremoniously lost to the Blue Devils in the first round of the tournament. What? I mean, were... I mean no, nobody was stopping Duke last season. They were a force. Uh, Maryland were going to be the only real challenge to them, as most people knew from pretty early on in the season. But I have to say, I haven't seen too much from Sean in his first two years. He hasn't been one of those players that's popped out of you. He's hovered around the top of the assist t- tables. So he's doing quite well there. Turnovers are slightly worrying. He's, he seems to be a pretty good handle of the ball, but turnovers are a bit worrying. He's He was fourth last season, fourth in assists. So at least he's he's getting dimes, but losing the ball a decent amount as well, which is slightly worrying. Yeah, but uh, turnover ratios usually are uh, on the rise with worse teams, like teams with a worse record, as there's much more forced, uh, well, not forced offense, but they're looking to create offense where it might not typically be available. So the uh, turnovers could could be a result of uh, trying to climb back into the game with any means necessary. Yeah, they're generally a sign of that. And he hasn't, last year, he wasn't surrounded by too much talent. Not sure what direction he's going to be going in, specializing maybe for a bit more of inside shooting. Uh, he's he's taken quite a few, he's averaging two three point attempts a game, but he's only hitting them about uh, 25% of the time. So the coach, I would probably advise him to stop taking those threes and maybe focus on his strength as a passer. The Georgetown Hoyas are losing uh, small forward player Tomura Shigaraki next season, uh, but uh, bright bright news for Stockton is that he is looking to reconnect with forward John Connor, I believe, next season, and they hope to make some more noise in the upcoming season. Stockton already took a noticeable leap in his scoring with the lack of an offensive powerhouse, but the leap only produced or only resulted in around 10 points per game. So there's still room to grow on that end. I think the uh, biggest concern with the loss of Shigaraki, because he was a uh, he was a candidate for um, the Defensive Player of the Year, actually. Not many people will have uh, noticed that, but he was second in steals, which is a pretty impressive total in blocks. So you can see he was a very good defensive player. And I don't know if the Hoyas might might miss that in this season. They might be uh, called into even more question than it was last year without Shigaraki there. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, for everyone's sake and the Georgetown home crowd's sake, uh, they'll be looking to improve in the offseason 
in any way they can to keep up uh, an upwards tra 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 trajectory. trajectory. <laughs> yeah. And they've got a um, they've got a great AD in charge. He's been around the league for a long time, so I've no doubt he'll be able to uh, get get a load of recruits in, fill in the gaps left, and uh, take the Hoyers back to March again. So Sean Stockton, as another guard, joins our five of the week. We'll move on to our fourth player, who is from the aforementioned Maryland Terrapins, Kevin Culpepper. A six foot seven inch shooting guard slash small forward wingman, uh, 16.5 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, 3.2 assists, with a 51.4 true shooting percentage. Uh, the Terrapins had a fantastic season, all in all, going 69 and 13, finishing first in the Big Ten division. And they played an all time classic in the season 36 NCAA tournament finals losing 120 to 110 to the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that this guy was a very key part in the Maryland's push to get that rack up that huge win total. He was the uh, second option on the team behind Armstrong, of course. 16 and a half points a game, which is a pretty huge amount just for a second option. Uh, and you can see his, his stats for the years, freshman year, uh, only about 10 points per game is summer four year 13 points and th and this last year just gone 16 and a half points per game so you see he's really the experience that he's gaining each year is really showing on the court yeah and uh, during the tournament Culpepper averaged 14.8 points uh, which is not a massive massive fall uh, it's only a slight fall even even for a second option, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, 8.5 rebounds, so actually 2.1 more rebounds throughout the tournament, and around the same number of assists, 3.0, uh, with a drop in true shooting percentage, which could obviously be attributed to uh, only one bad shooting night, or just the just the type of play of defense he's going to have to go against, and actually having more difficult shots and not so many open looks. Is, uh, is scoring going down a little bit in the playoffs is to be expected. That's going to happen to most players. But also the, the Terrapins game plan of get it to Armstrong was, was even more emphasized in the playoffs, as you can see by even the final in, against Duke where Armstrong had 50 plus points. 56, so it was really... a. 56 points which is a huge amount for a championship game obviously the game plan was just to get it to their best scorer and um Culpepper I expect him to become the focal point of the offense he's got a good a pretty good point guard in Eddie Donovan that's going to be taking another step upwards this year so I could see Culpepper climbing to the very top of the points table probably top five scorer I'd imagine yeah, and the uh, Terrapins are losing, uh, mentioned Ken Armstrong to the draft. Uh, even with his 56 point finals performance, he, I believe, was the second highest scorer in that game, which is mind boggling in itself. And they're also losing another big man in Andrew Wall, I think. Yeah, that's going to be a big hit on obviously Armstrong, the offensive force, and Wall, the uh, defensive player of the year. So they're going to be some big shoes to fill on offense and defense. Culpepper will be able to, maybe not to the heights that Armstrong hit, but he's definitely going to be able to get the Terrapins on the right track back to getting to another, on their road to another championship game at least. Yes, uh, they would actually be more in the consensus favor of making the finals instead of the Michigan State Spartans, like I made my hot take on. Even though losing major starter players, uh, they have the momentum of last season on their side, seeing as Duke as well lost some of their major players. Uh, and uh, obviously Duke, Duke, the biggest thing there is going to be the uh, turnover of the AD. Their uh, legendary coach has moved on, handed the reins over to uh, one of his assistant coaches. And that's going to be the real question of whether the, the history of Duke can uh, continue to be as successful as, as it has been in recent years. 
Yeah, and uh, the they're given to have a not a significant but a change in their record, I believe. But uh, I think the culture of winning is still there uh, with um, the new athletic director. But less about Duke and more about the five of the week. Uh, we'll move on to our final member of the five of the week. The freshman of the year winner, freshly minted, Finn Zhenglein from the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Uh, Finn is a 6 foot 5 inch shooting guard. Uh, Finn averaged 19.3 points, 5.1 rebounds, 3.2 assists with a 52.0 true shooting percentage. The Fighting Irish went 35 and 46, did not make the tournament and are losing uh, a center Prince Rogers Nelson to the draft, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's so. But we've seen what this guy can do throughout the year. He's been a, a proven quality scorer, being able to average almost 20 points a game, which is very rare for a freshman. The freshman I can remember scoring that high was maybe Max Hertz. There's probably been other ones more recently, but that's off the top of my head. Uh, he's going to be a scorer in the similar vein to Winchester. Maybe not as as much quality all around, but definitely from behind the arc. Zenglin's uh, almost 40% from there. He's taking 9.3 frees a game and hitting well. That's, that's what's really boosting his uh, points total up. Staying proficient even on a highest of high volumes, uh... Everyone will be hoping for him to take the next step in his development. Uh, two guards, like you mentioned, Winchester, could be all the hype uh, in a few years from now after the after the waves Winchester made in the NCAA. And Finn is an, in an excellent position to become a star of the future. Um, Finn also scored a career high of 45 against Virginia as a freshman and another 40 against a tough Arizona side who made the tournament so uh, the big game does not does not uh, concern him he is only concerned with putting points up on the board yeah that's a, a big thing that you can see uh, he's been super consistent throughout the season he's only scored less than 10 points in five games over the entire year which is a pretty impressive thing to see from a freshman as uh, a lot of freshmen you see get nerves and have a few off shooting nights but this guy is pretty damn consistent yeah be the leader for this fighting irish team and whether whether they can surround them with the talent needed to to get to the tournament is going to be an interesting thing to see yeah, and one of his uh, below 10 point games was a weird one uh, in January versus Duke, I believe, where he played uh, very sparingly, his minutes <laughs> very sparingly with all the foul trouble and ended up with below 10 points. So that's one of them, and I believe the other ones he did not post about 30 minutes at least that often. Uh, and yeah, noticing this trend where he was held to lower numbers, they tend to lose each and every time that happens. Yeah, obviously as the main offensive output of the team, he's not surrounded by too many quality shooters. So basically, if he's not scoring, the, the team does get into a bit of a rut. It, especially as soon as he's a the streaky nature of a three point shooter, sometimes you're going to hit, sometimes you're going to miss. Although he did have uh, he did have some scoring backup. Joey Hatfield, their uh, small forward, was had 16 points a game. Guard William Ekema on 13 points a game. So usually, if Finn isn't scoring, the Irish are going to struggle. Gets. Obviously, as he, his scoring output increases, he gets more and more experience on the court. He's going to be a real force this season, I think. Yes, and a honorable mention goes to the game I already mentioned against Virginia, where he scored 
10 out of 15 three point attempts and of course ended up with 45 points and congratulations to Finn on his freshman of the year award win that... uh, it was a a highly contested field actually um i had an article on on the NCAA network about the freshmen there is a lot of competition a lot of freshmen that are putting up pretty good stats um mostly guards actually there's been a one thing I've noticed as an AD is that there has been a, a lack of big men coming into the league, which is slightly concerning. I know there's been a few ADs that have struggled to uh, get their centers and power forwards active. And there's a few colleges that are struggling with that at the moment. With that, we're finished with our five of the week. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, it's been a pleasure to present you this first maiden voyage to podcasting by Danger Golding, the AD of West Virginia Mountaineers, and by myself, O Coach Star. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.